So Bill, what's your take on ICM? Oh, well, I think ICM is a much better model. It's a, it's a model that's predominant now and is much better than what people were doing back in the, uh, like 10 years ago, which was a proportional chip deal, which of course isn't right because you can have more than 50% of the chips and you never have more than 50% of the price pool if first is less than 50%, if, if that makes sense. Um, I, I like the independent chip model because, like, it kind of, without knowing the actual context of the game, whether limit or no limit or whatever, it it gives you like a pretty good estimate for the equities, and I use it a lot. I mean, basically, it's called the ICM because each chip the person has is considered independent, and the prize is aw awarded basically like a chip race. You have a chip race right. amongst everybody's chips. Uh, wh whichever chip wins a race is the winner of the tournament. All those chips are eliminated. Whoever wins a race amongst the, the rest of the chips is second, and so on and so forth. So, um, it's th it's a good model and it, it's a good way to estimate your equity. One of the problems with it is that it really isn't game specific. So you really got to watch out for some traps. For example, if you have the same number of chips as somebody and he's about to be all in in the big blind, um, then you have more equity than he does because you can just wait. He's got to like either go all in before the big blind or wait until the big blind and hope he wins there. So if you want to move, if there's a big jump in the money, I hope I'm not using too many like technical terms. Oh no, go ahead. If I, there's there's, there's a big like jump in the money, then um, ICM would be wrong there, and the guy who has the best position would actually have uh, most most of the equity. Also, ICM may not be that accurate when the big stacks are willing to kind of go to war with each other, because. Right then you have, may have more equity than you think in, 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 as a short stack. But I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good model and everyone should learn what it means and do a couple of calculations with it just to see what their tournament equity is. I think that's great info. Thank you, Bill. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about um, the M versus the big blinds in tournaments? Yeah, there's sort of a controversy. I think it's just like two ways of looking at the same thing. Um, I really like thinking about my overall tournament in terms of M because ba that basically tells you how many rounds you have. A M is like the total, uh, your stack compared to like the total number of chips in the pot. That tells you like sort of how many rounds you have until your chips go to oblivion. <laughs> of course, you're n usually never going to wait five rounds to play a hand, <laughs> especially when you're so short stacked, but um, it, it, it's a good sort of start. Um, the, the difference is when there's a big blind involved and uh, things like that. I mean, when there are antis involved, sorry. Um, and when there are antis involved, what happens is that you may have a lot of big blinds, but a small M, especially if the antis are big. Right. I think big blinds are kind of a good way of thinking about uh, bet sizing and things like that, like how much you should make your your raise. I mean, of course, if the antis are bigger, you should probably make the raise a little bigger. If the antis are smaller, you should make the raise a little smaller. But in general, first play specific hand, I like to think, well, uh, how many big blinds do I have? First play of the tournament, yeah, I kind of like to think about them. Right. I think that's great info. Thank okay, you so thanks. much. I'm Anna, and I'm here with Bill Chan. Thank you.